shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga. Big shit, big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique hustle. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Yeah, Madel, walk on. Hey, what's going on, man? None. Another day, another dollar, man. Say, man, we got a special guest in the house today, man. Um, she definitely, uh, um, she's a brilliant singer, brand new. She's not, she hasn't been in it forever. She fresh. Check it out, man. The Miss Officially Art? Yes, sir. Officially Art. Yeah, you can just call me Art. Art? Yeah. Check it, man. Art is in the building, man. What's going on? What's up? What's up? I'm here. <laughs> And I'm glad to be here. Hey, man. Uh, so, you know, shout out to Trey for making it happen. He was on me like, I don't know what that was, but uh, he, <laughs> he was trying to get you in here. Evidently, he likes the music a lot. Mm. So, shout out to that. that that's shout that's out Trey. Shout to him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so me, you you from Tyler? Yes, sir. East Tyler. Texas. East Texas. East Texas in the building. Yeah. Yeah, shout out East Texas, man. All you boys down there. Y'all got a lot of talent come from down there. So, um, so check it, man. First uh, thing we want to know is where she came up with that name, just officially art. Well, really? Uh, my initials spell art. So my middle, first, middle, and last name spell art. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, so just to make it professional, I just put officially in the in the front. So now it's just officially art. And you've always went by that name? No, people normally just call me art. And now they say officially art. So. Okay, so uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Did you grow up? How old were you when you, did you live your entire life in, in, in Tyler? No, I was born in Cali. Uh, so you was born in Cali. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Cali. What part? Uh, Upland. It's like by Upland. Pomona. That's where they got that money at. Look, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> How old was you when you moved out from in? Uh, uh, out from Cali. Yeah, probably like three. Okay, so and you, then I went to Fort Worth. Oh, you went to Fort Worth. Yeah. Stop six. Yeah. Market town. Yeah. So you've been moving around a lot. Yeah. And shout then, out to, uh, to to Fort Worth, man. That, them, them boys out there, they got some real stomp down boys. Hey, man, shout out to Austin <laughs> White, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. Them boys over there real. I like them. Yeah, so then after Fort Worth, it just came to Kilgore, East Texas. Kilgore. And, Overton? Uh, no, Kilgore. You was right there by Overton. Yeah, yeah, by Overton, yeah. Yep. How did you, okay, so your mother just like moving around? I guess, my mom and dad. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I went to Tyler. So it wasn't even military or any reason? Oh, yeah, they, uh, my dad was in the Navy. Oh, there it is. Yeah, 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 that had to be it. Because yeah. normally when people move around a lot, that's usually the reason why, yeah. is because of the military. But I've been in Tyler the longest, so. Oh, yeah? How old were you Off when you loop? actually settled in Tyler? In Tyler, probably like mm, around 10 Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. you've been there the longest. Yeah, right. the longest, yeah. Is that your favorite place you've lived out of everywhere? That's the only place I really remember. Remember? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so you um you you were down there in Tyler, uh, uh banging it out. Um <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So did you go what you say you went to college at where? Prairie View? Uh, Prairie View A and M University. Shout out Prairie View. Yes, sir. A and M my little cousin over there. What's her name? <laughs> uh, Shatoria, man. Shout out Shatori over there. Shatori over there at Prairie View, man. Holding it down with that four point oh. Mm-hmm. Great point average. Yes, okay. sir. GPA. Yeah. Shout out to my little cousin, Dean's man. Okay. All of that. Yes. Yeah, we working, man. What did you take up over there? Uh chemical engineering. Chemical I just engineering. So mm-hmm. so have you have you landed you a gig yet? Uh right now. Yeah, you're gonna I'm gonna become a Dallas internship. nigga. You coming to Dallas? Yeah, nigga. yeah. So I work in Dallas. What you want to do, or you want to be a full time singer? I wanna, like, I feel like I need both. Like, um, I need to balance both. Is it possible to do both? Because a chemical engineer that that requires a lot of time. Well, right now I'm doing like um, research. So okay. right now I'm just I need to be able to think and have artistic side. I need both. Mm-hmm. I can't just have one, or then like I'm unbalanced. Already okay. yeah. unbalanced, huh? <laughs> okay. So you know in order to be a millionaire, you know, shout out Steve Madden and all the other uh multi millionaires that I've linked up with. Um uh, uh you know, you can't just do one thing. Yeah. Can't. You gotta get it. Got to. Yeah, you gotta get it. Got to. But yeah. it's different though. The type of careers that you're um pursuing, they both need you. Mm-hmm. to be in there to to, to perform. Yeah. Compared to, you know, Steve Madden and all these other people. They can start it, hire a whole bunch of people, and let it run, yeah. and move on, and just build another business. Yeah, but it business. didn't, it didn't yeah, start like that. With being a chemical engineer, they need you there 
you know, doing yeah. everything and being a singer, you have to be present yeah, to go perform. Yeah, definitely. So yeah, that's the... When, you, when, you don't, when you're dealing with it, you start off a certain way. You're a brand, in a sense. So with you being a brand, you definitely got to know how to delegate well or have some people around you to help you with that craft. And, and also, chemical engineering is just a... Really, it's a startup process, a foundation, to me, to where you're not going to continue to do that. You're going to end up branching off and being something, something else. else. Yeah. Because right now, I don't even work in the engineering field. I do research, you know, yeah. for, like, another company, not even an engineering company. So I'm just like, you know, I just need to use my both sides of my brain. I can't just use one. That's just how well, I work. Well, you young, though, man. Yeah. You you young, Any you know kids? what I'm saying? But you, huh? Any no. kids? No. <laughs> She's just a kid herself. No, man, no kids, nothing. And that's okay. what's up. I yeah. mean, at the end of the day, you young, man. And, mm -hmm. and, but but don't, don't, uh, don't, don't. Don't play with time. Okay. Don't play with time. And don't rush. And don't don't, don't, don't play with time, though. Don't play with time. You need to figure it out. Got to. And Got the reason to. I say that is because time is of the essence. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the true. most important thing is that you don't play with time. Hmm. I could promise don't you. Don't scare that. me. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's serious because most people take it, 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 they don't take it serious enough. Yeah. See, see, tomorrow's not promised to you. Yeah, Mark. true. So you got to be serious about making sure you enjoy the day. I felt that. But, hey, you're going to feel a lot sitting there dealing with me. You don't <laughs> no, realize no what's no going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you started out being from uh, Tyler, but mm -hmm. then going to uh, PV, did you feel like, man, when I got up there, you like, it's, it, man, like, did you get wild? Well. Don't lie to me. I didn't even want to go to PV. Did Let's you get real. wild? Uh, yeah, well, shout out to the wild girls down no, there at PV to have hey, parties. Hey, don't put words in my mouth. Oh, okay. um, <laughs> I, I just got uh, cultured. I'm going to say that. I got cultured. That's what they're calling it. Cultured. No, 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 I got no, no, cultured. What does that mean? Cultured. What does that mean you got cultured? So, Your since, people, you say you, since you say you got cultured while you were there, that, mean that, that means that when you were at home with your family, you, were you a shelter yeah, child? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. my dad's a pastor, so I was just like... Shout out to your oh, dad okay. that's a pastor. So What's his name? Oh, my gosh. We're not putting him not, out there why like not? that. not? I don't want you don't to. want him to be? No. A, oh, man, you wrong for that. So Shout out to you. Daddy. He's still, man. Hey, man, your little girl is here. <laughs> I hope you see this video. She didn't want to say your name, but a shout out to your church, your establishment. Everything that you're doing for God, it, it goes noticed. Yes. I'll let your boy see Unique Hustle. Oh, praises to God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's where you started singing was in the church? Oh, yeah, in the church. But I didn't, I didn't really think I could actually sing until, okay. like, later. You know, like probably in college, to be completely honest. Mm. So what um, what made you feel that you could sing? Was it people who told you that no. or then what well, was cause that? Well, because like I kind of always got compared to my friends and like they were like my friends could sing, too. So it's like I, I always got compared to them. So I was kind of insecure. But uh, in college, I would record myself and I'm just like, oh, like it actually sound good. You know, so I'm like. Oh, maybe like I could actually do this. I loved it. Mm -hmm. I used to write as a kid, so. So yeah. do you write all your lyrics now? Yeah, uh, so I, I don't really get no help writing my lyrics. Sometimes okay. I do, yeah. but sometimes I, you do get help. Yeah, but yeah, but you most don't. of the time I don't at yeah. all. So if you could go back and tell, and um, t how old were you at that time? Oh, uh, like when you first discovered that you could sing, mm, or first had you know confidence in yourself? In, as a, probably like. 19 so if you could go back and tell your 16 year old self because you were singing before then mm -hmm. um something what would you tell your 16 year old self to motivate yourself at that point because there are girls out there honestly like you who um back then who love to sing but don't have the confidence feel that whether they're not pretty enough or their vocals are not mm -hmm. enough because they feel like they have to have that full package. You have to yeah. have the looks with the voice with the yeah. this to be marketable. True. What would you have to? T what would you tell that child? I would tell that child back then, that sixteen year old girl, that eleven year old girl, that ten year old girl, that you can be whatever you want to be. You know, and as long as you put your full heart into it and your passion and your love into it, it it will never go unnoticed. Mm. Mm. So. That's why I would tell that little girl. That's deep. I like it. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, you got to always remember, there are people that watch, and behind these microphones, they're very powerful. Yeah. So as you permeate the ears of those young people out there, we hope that they see something in you that changes them. 
that's the same thing your dad be doing, trying to get that message out. Yeah. Yeah, so now you're doing it through song. Yeah. Check it, man. No, for real. <laughs> I peep that. I'm excited, though, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we're happy to have you on the show, man. We just, we love the fact that, you know, our young people, man, they, um, yeah, they're doing things in, and they're trying to come out of a box, a bubble, you yeah. know. And, and PV, you know, you, you got, you check it, man. You degreed up, man. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. not only you, not only are you trying to sing, but you went and got your education, and that's yeah, important, true. you know. Uh, from HBCU, mm -hmm. shout out, man. That's what yes, I'm talking sir. about. Check it. <laughs> what have been inspiring you so far um, when you write your songs? Like all the songs you've done before, what was your inspiration? My pain. Your pain. Mm hmm. Uh, uh, wait it's, a minute. That's so crazy. Why is it always pain well, that sometimes makes inspire it's, people? It's not really joy as much. When you're joyful, sometimes you it don't. Is. Uh, sometimes, like, the idea of things makes me want to write music. Like, sometimes, like, I've never had a, a boyfriend, right? So I always you think. Never of, had a boyfriend. No, I used to be gay. Uh, that's a long story. But uh, 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 you can't just touch on something and then jump <laughs> yeah, off and yeah, be yeah, like, you're, you're, so yeah. hold I know on, you had your daddy like that. <laughs> yeah, shout out to the, the gay <laughs> girl. Oh, so much yeah. to talk about. But no, um, well, let's get into it. That's what we're here for. Okay, um, but no, so so let's go back. Hold on, hold we got on, a lot on. of topics. To hold on, hold to on, cover. hold on. Let me let me say this. The reason why we touch on all these topics, especially when you bring it up, I always say, don't ever be scared to say things because we use our platform to educate to help people because there's so many other young girls out there who might be watching this who is in your shoe that you were in you know what i mean yeah. so you want to use this voice this platform to help someone yeah true you know so don't ever feel shy or i tell people when you go through things don't ever be ashamed of what you go through no matter how bad it is mm -hmm. don't ever worry about somebody judging you because god allows us to go through things for a reason if you're still here that mean you overcame it or mm -hmm. if you haven't even overcome it you are about to overcome it so you True. have to keep pushing because your story is going to be a testimony to someone else who is watching True. you see what i mean yeah. so just, just, just growing up you know um um you know and and going through what you went through i mean you know how did you get caught up in the fact that you thought you was gay, gay? um as a young child um i was already I, I don't know, like, I was already hypersexual, and I don't know if How I was young? just born like that. How young? Young, young, like, young, like. Ten? Two, like. Two? Three, like, young. Dang, really? I don't know if somebody, and, and nobody, like, older yeah. approached me. No, I you don't, don't remember that, that happening, do you? I remember. She doesn't remember. I remember. I remember distinct little things. I definitely remember. Um, It would be, like, a little boy and me. We were kissing, but I'm three years old but at this time i don't know how it started so it had to be him initiating right. it right but i just how know was he? he was young too he was older than me how old was he i don't know i was three so i was living in Fort Worth at this time so maybe he was like five or six so, okay you know so i don't really know but mm -hmm. um he was legal <laughs> yeah, yeah he was yeah, older go, than let's me let's go let's go but then um i remember in elementary school i used to look at girls Mm. And their butts or whatever and i just be like why do i do that and at this time i'm just like i'm growing up in the church so i know it's wrong you know because i can tell i can feel it but most women do that anyway yeah but i, I didn't know I, I just felt weird so okay. i'm just like why am i doing that so i'm like you know i just want to look at their jeans because i think they're you know cute so i've kind of programmed myself to look at their jeans and then after a while it kind of just like chill i was like oh you know it's going away but then uh this girl in third grade um she touched me yeah. and down there and like i was just like whoa you know i like that mm -hmm. i don't know how i liked it i did and she used to do it all the time and then this little boy in the same grade did it to me and i'm just like what's going on you know what so I'm you saying? like both of them um so then i look under the table one day we're all like at a, a table computer lab and they're both doing it to each other <laughs> under the table and i'm just like Boy, them was some managed kids yes. right there. And you I'm was in Tyler. Like, no, I was in Kilgore at this time. Oh, these kids, boy. I tell it's you, you talking about yeah, it. So I'm just like, you know, what is going on? And then, okay, let's just keep And going. this was in elementary school. Yeah. This elementary school. You know what? Shout out, shout uh, out to Lyndon. We had our grade. Issues. And that's funny because, okay, raising, being a mom, raising kids. Mm -hmm. And then um, I'm glad that my daughter, she has a relationship with me where she comes to me and tells me certain things. Mm -hmm. And it blew my mind when she told me certain things in elementary school that these kids were doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm thinking, you do, you start doing all that in high school mm -mm. yeah and when they're telling me elementary school i'm like oh my god yeah no i can remember things happening mm -hmm. in elementary school yeah i mean kids i mean you get your first girlfriend in about the third grade 
Mm. Yeah, for third, for second to third grade. Yeah, I, I started. Yeah, reaching out about the third grade, writing my letters. You know, <laughs> yes or no. You know, what's up? You know, <laughs> yeah. I just learned how to write, but I'm in your bill. I'm, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna go and get this to you. You put it in your book bag. That's funny. Yeah, but this is what it. This yeah, is yeah, where yeah, it that's starts. Real life. And you see, you know, you're a kid, but you see, and you're pretty much. You're seeing these relationships, and I think a lot of times people ignore the fact that kids are looking. So you're like a sponge at an early age. Yep. So you you pick up on things, and it's not a thing to where you should uh, uh, not think that it happens with everybody. This happens with this is this is human nature. This is the way we the way we respond. Now the only thing is you don't have nobody to talk to. That's what I was just about she to ask some, you. Did you ever have a um, uh, parent or did you older feel person like you could you go could to your to? mom or someone? Oh, you felt like to you had to hide it. Um, like in at this point in my life, I felt like maybe this is normal. You know, at three at, at, at third grade, at third grade, I really didn't know. Like mm -hmm. I really was okay. Maybe I just didn't talk to nobody about it. Yeah. But I don't. I don't know why. You know, I don't know why I didn't talk to nobody about it. Yeah. But um, I knew what was like. I knew what was going on, but I didn't know it what what it was. I don't know if it was bad, good. Like it was just happening. You know. Yeah. Um, so then, and, sorry, but oh. I just have to say this: parents, talk to your kids, ask these questions, even in elementary school. I'm telling you this right now because when you're saying that, the only thing I'm thinking is that parents are not approaching you to ask you these questions because they're thinking that these things don't happen in elementary school. Yeah. So they're so yes, a child might not feel comfortable or know. Okay, I need to go talk to my mom. Or I need to go talk yeah. to my aunt or whatever. Or my dad. So, or my dad. Uh, sorry, but <laughs> we as parents need to ask our kids, even at that age, what goes on in school. Yeah. Build that relationship with your child, even at that age, because things are going on in these schools. Yeah, sure. I just had to say that. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, but after that, um, like towards middle school, it was going away. Like I got into guys. So I was like, whoa, you know, start going boy crazy. So I was like, yes. Like, you know, it was having fun. <laughs> I met a group of friends, but they were bad influences. And then um, seventh grade year, though, my friends turned on me and um, I got bullied. And like the whole school turned on me. And then while this is going on, uh, I got molested. And um, that really affected like everything. By who? Uh, I'm not putting that out. What did you get bullied for? A family member? Yeah. Give me a second. Let me ask this question. Definitely. It was a family mm -hmm. member. I don't mind you not putting it out, but how old were you? Uh, at this point, I'm like 12. Oh, so you're like 12 now. Yes, and this is probably like the worst time it could happen. Did you ever talk to anybody? Uh, no. Tell anybody? No. You felt like you couldn't? I feel like I couldn't. But wow. eventually you did? Uh, no. Eventually I did, probably in high school. Okay. But at this at this point in middle school, um, I'm like chubby, so... Um, I just stopped eating and I started wearing oversized clothes. And at this point, my whole, all my friends turned on me. So I left to be alone, you know, and I didn't want to go to cafeteria because I was scared, you know, I didn't want to get picked on. I didn't have, I was alone, you know what I'm saying? And your parents didn't see the change in you where mm -hmm. that was concerned of how you were dressing, how you were acting. The bullying wasn't? they knew about because okay. it was a big deal. It was, um, blown up around school like like I said like this guy I was talking to stopped talking to me because he heard the rumors that were going around which weren't even true you know so at this point it was like a turning stage definitely a turning point in my life um that kind of shaped my brain how my brain functions now which is not good but it what I look at is the fact that you're still here because a lot of people some people commit suicide over bullying yeah. Some people um, do terrible things because of bullying. Yeah. You know what I mean? But you're still here. True. So always turn whatever you go through into a positive. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, um, it's just emotional. But it's crazy because the person that did turn on me is, like, my best friend now. So. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> to, to get, One to, of my best friends. To let's get, say that. Let, me, let, me, let me go back into the uh, you got molested part. Um when you came out of it, do you feel like you've uh, now uh, healed from it? Healed. No. And I think, and the reason I brought that back up because something Malkevia said when he was on here is when you can't talk about it fully, you still hadn't fully healed. And I agree with that because 
it, it, it's a thing where you can tell. That's why when he said I was molested four times by uh, four, two boys four, by and two, two girls, two, two, two adult, four adults, four adults, four adults, two uh, two men and two women. Okay, and then he was able to Before express 11. it to us and mm. talk to us about it. And he said the reason he could because it's his testimony, so he can help other little kids out there. Yeah. So whenever you get ready to talk about it, let me know because those kids can see something in you that could spring a change in their life. I was gonna go ahead and put in my music. Yeah, um, I talked. I talked to people about it. Like I definitely. Um, it's just. No, 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 no. If you're not ready, don't do it. I'm just saying yeah. at some point that can help some other little kid yeah. that might be in middle school or 12 years old like you were to come out of their situation. And mm -hmm. it's people like you that can pull them out because nobody else has been through it and you've been through it. Yeah. So you can tell them, baby, you got to do this. I had to do this and I wish I had done that. Yeah. And next thing you know, they're coming out of their situation. By the grace of God, yeah. you got to always put God in the forefront got of to. it. Because that's the only thing that gives you the power of healing and mm -hmm. forgiveness to bring you out of the situation completely to move forward yes. and also speaking about it can help you heal yourself mm -hmm. you know what i mean because mm -hmm. the more you lock something up you don't deal with it but the more you talk about it is the more it becomes like not controlling you you yeah. control it mm -hmm. you know yeah. what i mean yeah. yeah so you have to talk about it whether it's through your music a lot of people who do music they do it through um that's how they get everything out. That's how they heal. That's therapy. You yeah. know what mm -hmm. I mean? That's how they do that. Yeah. But you just got to, and you just got to make sure that um, you keep on putting that music out, man, and mm -hmm. healing these kids and healing these grown folks. Because yeah. they ain't just kids. It's grown people that grown are still people. held back by situations mm -hmm. that overtook them at young ages. And next thing you know, bam, you know, they said, dang, man, I heard art, man. And that helped me, man. Mm -hmm. And they could be 40 years old. True. They could be 50. They could be 30, but still hadn't healed in those spots where art is singing to them about. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to art. I can't wait for that song yeah, to come out. Yeah, shout out to art. Yeah, I'm that's the one we're waiting on. Yeah, I'm going to be looking out for that I one. I got y'all. I got y'all. Yeah, yeah you're going to come back and share it on the platform. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going to come Man. back. Man, so um, when you just just um, tell me, um, top three artists of all time that you, that, that you look up to, they, they could be dead or alive, uh, any genre. Uh, top three artists, dead or alive? Dead or alive. Let's uh, see. Number one. Mm, let's say Drake. I like Drake. Drake. Uh, I like um, Michael Jackson. Mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. And Sam Cooke. Sam Ooh. Cook. Shout out to Sam like Cook. That. that was just on the top of my head. So that's, that's what's good. up. Okay. That's that's quick too, cause a lot of times people always get the one and two real quick and sit down. Now which have one to was it? For what the was third. it, Steph? What, who did she say? Drake, Michael Jackson, Michael Jackson and Sam Cooke. Okay. I remembered. That's it. <laughs> That'll work, you know. Yeah. And um, so if you could sing with anybody, you said it would be who? If you could sing with, perform with anybody, perform with anybody. Yeah, yeah. Have a, a EP with anybody. Oh, EP. Who would it be? Come on now, don't take all day. You I love don't know. Her. I'm kind of like. You should have had that on a bucket list somewhere. I know it off the top of your head like that. It's so many people though. Yeah, like, give it to me. It's a lot of Anybody. people I would like to EP with. Mm, it would have to be Drake. Shout out Drake. You made the EP list. But it's so many art. more. It was so, it's so many but, more. But Drake though. the GOAT right now, so I get it. Everybody loves Drake. Yeah, it's just the emotion, you know. Mm. Yeah. And I'm all about emotion, so. Yeah. Yeah, so, if you can't tell right now. Because <laughs> I'm No, it's all emotional. good. That's all good. Um But that's good. R and B I mean singers have to be emotional because I love R and B. Okay, and you I keep love, saying that every show. Who do you I love do. in R and B? I love Who's your R &B. favorite R and B artist? I love Kim. I love Kim. Kim oh no, I didn't add no, just one. Who do you love the most? The most oh Charlie Wilson. Charles, oh, yeah. Shout out Charlie Wilson. Quit picking at Charlie my wife, Wilson. nigga. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I love me some Charlie yeah, Wilson. I don't like that nigga no more. Yearning, <laughs> yearning for my little gap band, Charlie Wilson. <laughs> oh man, tell him I say sit down. He he about seventy. So, man, but seventy eight. Hey, look ooh, here, man. Don't have be you coming seen the new Charlie Wilson with all that beard? I mean, oh, I ain't seen that old man, <laughs> man. Good. Get that man some AARP or whatever. You know what I'm good. talking about? Not the looking good. <laughs> so so just, let's get back to the music. So um, you um, you sing a little bit. Yeah. You you think you we gonna see if you can give us a little bit? You know I mess with you. The girls that come on this show, I give them tough times oh, by gosh. performing. Let's let's get into it, man. Let's do a little hold freestyle. On. Hold on. Give me a little. Bit. Hold on. Don't just jump into it. We want to make sure we got our sounds and stuff right. Okay. Okay. Can you hear that? Yeah, just a little louder. Yeah. 
I got it right here, man. What do you think? Yeah, I'm good. That's it? Mm-hmm. All right, let me bring that back. Check it, man. We're going we gonna to bring you in. You know what I'm saying? Just relax. You know what I'm saying? Feel the vibe. <laughs> art, officially art, is in the building. And uh, hey, man, y'all about to enjoy this. Check it, man. That's a vibe right there. Yeah, it yeah, is. That's a vibe. Okay. That's why you picked that, huh? Okay. Yeah, I got you. Check it, man. Let the beat come in. Yeah, it ain't came in. It's coming. Sure. Check it, check it, man. Art. About to perform art, man. And I gotta get rid of the jitters. Let's go. Been waiting for you, love. I've been waiting for your love I've been hurting, I've been waiting Your love, you got me complaining You just keep waiting, so Yeah You keep hurting me I just want your love You made me so please I just can't wait to just make me so confused Come on How you gonna be, be, be How you gonna sleep, sleep, sleep Without me, oh Been yearning for your love I've been waiting for your love Can't love me so enough Can't tell us say no Yes, sir Yeah, it's just a little something. Say, though. man, very nice, very unique, man. Yeah. You know, you it's a vibe, man. You know, art, man, officially art, man. Just did that, hey, man. And I'm going to be honest with you, man. Anytime you drop that music, you got to come through and see us, man. Mm-hmm. It's a whole different vibe. I, I see where you're going with it. What did you think about art, man? She's talented. She's talented? She's talented. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I love to hear the new talent. I love to hear the sound. You know, I love to see the build up. Yeah. I like all that, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Boss Talk love you now. You in Boss Talk's arms. Yeah, yeah we embracing you now. I really appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and, and that Pastor Daddy, yo, we, imp- we definitely like him, too. You don't know him. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a good relationship with your dad yeah. right now? Uh, Yeah, I mean. That's good. And your mom as well? Yeah. We all, we all like, trying to heal from yeah. wounds. Yeah. So it's like. Yeah, it's kind of up and down, but at the end of the day, it's still love. It's life. You yeah. gotta tell. Let me tell you. No matter what you've been through in life, with any loved one, doesn't have to be your dad, or your mom, but any loved one, just tell them every day that you love them. No matter what you've been through, say I forgive you, mm-hmm. and will you forgive me? Because don't ever think that you just have something up against somebody and it doesn't go both ways. You always ask that because you don't ever know when is your time or when is their time. Yeah, don't ever think that you're, you have time to reconcile. I have heard that so many times. Oh, I have time to reconcile. We're going to be good. And tomorrow they're gone. Yeah. You don't ever know. Let me, let me go a little deeper. You know, when I think about, you know, what we've talked about here on this platform and what she's been through, um, I look at her art, right? And I look at the things that she's trying to accomplish in life. And those unforgiving doors or those healing points can slow down the process of her production and what she's trying to accomplish. Okay. So, therefore, you have to forgive and you have to heal in a way to where you can produce. Because yeah. God is, that, that whole thing, that's why the Bible tells you if you have any fault with any brother, that you have to leave that gift mm-hmm. at the altar. Mm-hmm. And then you have to go to that brother and apologize because he knows that that process is going to heal you and it's going to help you and the individual that you have the issue with so as you go through life you have to at some point dump everything so you can continue on at the end of the day like i don't even want to get emotional but wow like i don't know i'm just very overwhelmed with emotions yeah you know sometimes healing when you're healing like everything seems okay you Mm -hmm, know mm -hmm. but then tomorrow just seems like you're breaking apart. Yeah, but I think every day is another day, and you have to wake up with the same, with that intensity. That's why the Bible said, "Not don't let the sun go down on your wrath." 
because if you let the sun, you know, you, you, if you take it to the next day and you take it to the next day and you continue to hold on to it, it's baggage that you carry in and it holds you up. It, it's like you got a bag on your back, right? Mm-hmm. And you're trying to go. And as you go, it's hard to, it's hard to go because of all the stuff that keep holding you back. And you got a special gift and that special gift in you is, is pretty much going to help a lot of people around you. And the devil knows that. So with the devil knowing that, he tries to stop that gift in you by putting all these different things up against you to stop you from prospering. Yeah. Does that make sense to you? Yeah. So this is the thing you have to do. You have to learn to pray, and you have to learn to let go, and you have to learn to heal. And as you process all these things, God continues to love you because you heals. And you know what helps me? A lot of times when we're going through situations, like say today's a good day and you, you're so happy and tomorrow comes and it's a bad day. The first thing we start to be mad at a bad day, we, we why, why, why? It was such a good day yesterday. We're not thinking that that's the devil attacking me because God started working miracles in my life. So I'm not going to let him win. I'm going to change this mood. I'm going to change this feeling. Whatever I need to do to turn this from a negative to a positive, I'm going to do this because just like a person who's an alcoholic, in order for them to get help, they have to first say, I'm an alcoholic. So in order for you to overcome the devil, you have to realize that all those bad things that you're going through, that's him coming at you. Whether that's God allowing him to come at you, to test you, to make you get stronger and to learn from it. Mm -hmm. But you have to realize what it is Mm -hmm. first. And once you notice what it is, you can defeat it. You can say, you know what? You're not going to play with me today and just keep it moving. You understand what I mean? So you have to talk to yourself. That's what I do. I talk to myself a lot. And and, and like I said, the the one thing about it when you you think about uh, pressing on, you know, uh, Paul said something about it. He said, I press on toward the high high calling, which is in Christ Jesus. It's like you're going to hit some of the bull's eyes you're going to miss, but you got to continue to shoot. So every day when you're going through different challenges and everything that you're waking up to, it's a different time that you have to fight these battles. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's a battle every day. You know what I'm saying? So you you get up with it. I get up with it. She get up with it. it, And everybody around you gets up with it. That some people can hide theirs a little better, Mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, everybody everybody going through through something. Yeah. And so that's the whole game. And I think a lot of times people put up these fake perceptions of life on Instagram, on Facebook, on TikTok, yeah, on that. Twitter. Yeah. And it, it, it makes you think that everybody having a damn good time yeah. when it's a lie. A lot of time, most of the time, it's a lot of falsism. These guys are staging just like episodic events in a movie. Mm-hmm. So don't get caught up on anything but your relationship with God, your personal relationship with God. He says that you fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm-hmm. He says that you are a chosen generation, a peculiar people. Yeah. You know what I mean? He said, ye are God. So at the end of the day, you got to get those things inside of you. Encourage yourself. Mm-hmm. You don't need nobody else to encourage you, Art. You can encourage yourself because God said you were more than a conqueror. True. Is that the way you're supposed to do it? Yeah. <laughs> That's what you got to do. Yeah. That's what I've been doing. That's what I've been doing. It's like I've been doing so good. And, like, my relationship with God is, like, strong. Yeah. And it's, yeah. it's continuing, continuing to get better and progress. Man. And, like, just right now, just, like, right now, like, something's been trying to hold me back because I feel elevation, right? Yeah. Right, co- like, coming. Like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel something about to happen, mm-hmm. like, tomorrow, today. Already. Yeah, you feel me? So I know, like, I'm... I am called to be someone great and someone to inspire mm. more than just myself and more than just people here. And like, yeah. I'm, in, I'm called to inspire little girls and even little yeah. boys. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And like, I know this and it's like, but sometimes it's hard. No, but, but, but you went through all this stuff to, to be able to do it. You are, you have went through the things to be able to touch the people because they're going through a lot of hurt. Yeah. So just look at it that way. Yeah. You, you, you're the chosen one. It's not going to be easy. Yeah. And then by you saying what you just said, but it's hard. But when you overcome this and you're talking to those little boys and little girls, you're going to say, but it was hard. Mm. But there, I didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel, but I overcame. Amen. By the grace of God. Mm. Because you always have to put them in there. Mm-hmm. Got you, to. You always have to do that because just, you can feel it. You can feel it. 
it's so crazy. You always have to put them in. You always have to you have always have to change your mood every time whenever it's not going the way in which it's supposed to go. Yeah. Whether you have to go in the Bible or sometimes I'll throw on some gospel music to mm-hmm. change my mood. But you have to mm-hmm. and then you just keep it moving and lead your life every day in that positive manner because you don't know who is watching you. Tell your stories mm-hmm. because people want to know that they can look at you having a good life now and nobody never knew your dark past and be like, oh, she looked like she, she has been perfect ever since she was. Yeah. But they don't know your testimony. If they knew your testimony, it could change somebody else's life. True. You know you, what I mean? So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How old are you again, if you don't mind me? Uh, 24. 24. That's a good age, man. Yeah. Young. Say, yeah, you're young, but like I told you, don't play with time. I, I'm not. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We got we to gotta make sure we get this, this you know, this vision out there. Yeah. We got to get siblings? this gift out there. Yeah, I got siblings. I have uh, two brothers and four sisters. Are you the youngest? Yeah. Yeah, she got that baby, baby girl. <laughs> baby girl. I got three sisters, my bad. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you forgot about one. Yeah, one. Which one did you forget about? No, no, no. Check it, I man. Said, I, said, <laughs> I, had, I, I said I had too many. Two, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So you yeah. had one more. I think I got three sisters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, hold yeah. On. Is it by the same mom and dad? No. Uh, Wait. Uh, no. No, I, I, I know figured that. I the way like these, but because <laughs> that's when people normally forget somebody is because it's by different. different yeah, right. Yeah, so on my mom's side, I only got one sister, mm-hmm. and okay. on my dad's side, that's where everybody else comes from. And what you're so, saying is, mm-hmm. it, it explains a lot because what you're speaking on is dysfunctionality. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and 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 that's something that I've faced. That's something that my kids have faced. When we when we we, we I tell my kids, it's not your fault. When my, my daughter was going through something, it's not your fault. Because I didn't give you a good platform to go by in life. Because yeah. I did so many things at a young age that I caused a schism between my family members. Mm-hmm. And because my daddy did it. Yeah. And, and so basically what I'm explaining to you is generational curses. Yeah. So when they went through it, they going through the same thing I went through. And they like, man, you know, it's tough. And I'm like, man, it's tough. But... It takes God to mend those places, those mm-hmm. bridges. And, and and so my first thing is to say to, to my kids, hey, man, I put you all through a lot. Mm-hmm. And when you come to me with a problem, I know why you're going through it because a lot of it's my influence. A lot yeah. of it's your mother influence. And, and I just I just want to tell you I'm sorry. And that, then, then, then maybe they can move on. But we got to do something to stop the curse from happening to each generation. Yeah, true. That's what I'm doing. Like, I already know I'm I'm the one to, to break, break these the curses. Curse, yeah. And I feel like that's another reason why it feels so heavy sometimes. Yeah, yeah. So I just I just know everything gonna fall into place and I do have faith. Hey. So Hey, faith the, the can gra- remove mountains. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Faith the grain of a yeah, mustard seed. So just a little bit of faith. I wasn't expecting to come on here and be hey, on. Hey, 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 hey. This is a this is where it happened. There's a lot of praying going on in here. Yeah. So you can you can understand that we people that pray. So when you come in here, anything can happen because the devil is in trouble yeah. because I'm here. Mm-hmm. See, and I'm, I'm the one that he don't even want to deal with because I'm the one that been through a lot. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it, it, it's like, okay, now I'm going to guide you out with me. We're going to walk out together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Holding our hand mm-hmm. up in victory. Yeah. You understand that? We're going to win. And that's why the music going to do good. Mm-hmm. That's why you hear God didn't bring you here for no reason. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you, if you want to come and express something, if you want to come and launch something that you got this new, Boss Talk 101 is here, man. We're here for you. Anybody that come on our platform, we prayed for them to come on yeah, our platform. Yeah, we pray. Mm. We pray I'm every day because I always well we always pray that anybody who come here, God lead them here so that whether we can give them a word or they can tell their testimony and change somebody, help somebody. Because I, I've always said and I keep on saying this platform is here to help. It's here to help and to change people's lives. That's right. So you came on to show your music, but yeah. we already have another plan. <laughs> we here to help somebody. Yeah. Your gift is something that's in you. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's supposed to help people. That's what your gift is for. Yeah. yeah your singing is to help somebody. Yeah. You, know, you you see what I'm saying? I already know. Yeah, yeah. So mm-hmm. you're you're gonna you're gonna help people. I and and, and mm-hmm. yeah, and, and that's the good part about it. Yeah. And you've you've blessed us today for mm-hmm. just coming on the platform, man. I mean, uh, mm-hmm. I've enjoyed myself. You know, well, how you about you? A, I I do as well, because you have a gift that I I always said I wish I had. Yeah, she, she don't have it. Because <laughs> I cannot sing. No, not a the, lick. Hello. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> because I'll, cause singing can 
it can change a mood. It can change somebody's life. When you sing and someone can hang on to every word that you're saying, you know what I mean? If you sing for good times, bad times, and someone is going through something, they already know I need to pull for her song because she's going to uplift my spirit. Just like how I tell you, you have to pull for a gospel song when you know you're fighting against the devil. Yeah. Songs do so much for people. And it's not always the melody, it's the words. Because yeah. when you sit down here and you can sing something and you can touch someone's soul, man, that's a miracle to that's touch someone's miracle. soul. That's yeah. by the words that you can sing and really... They can feel every everything that you're going through just by how you sing it. You know what I mean? They can yeah. feel your pain. They can feel your joy. That's something else. For me, rap, I don't get that. But for, <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. But singing, I get that. What about yeah. um, say um, like what song do you what do you sing when you when you really think you like? If I say you're doing an audition for something and you had to give me a solo, what um, would it be? Let's see. Maybe I like. I'll be singing country music. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I want to hear that. I got I got a guy named T Dash coming on Saturday. Have you heard of him? Mm -mm. Oh, he have. I'm gonna have to let I'll let you uh I'll let you uh uh definitely uh um I'll let you uh hear him when we off the air, okay? Makeup. But you probably done no, seen him. Fine. You look great. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um yeah, she say it would be country. Probably, probably like yeah, maybe. I love country. So. Yeah, who you think you is? Darius Ruck or somebody? Tim McGraw. I don't know. I like all types of music. What's the, what's the country song that you like? Oh, you probably won't know it. It's yeah, it called, don't matter. It's called Oklahoma by Billy. Yeah, Billy let's go. Gilman. You hear it? Hold on. Let, yeah, yeah, I wanna, yeah. Uh, maybe I can just do. Oh, you got something you want to do? I don't know yet because I got so many. Um, yeah, see, when you tell her the uh, same, she go to smiling at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's see. Um, all right. Let's go. One last turn, he held his breath As they reached the fifth house on the left And all at once the tears came rolling in And as they pulled into the drive A man was waiting there outside Wiped the worry from his eyes Smiled and took his head And he says I'm the man who looks like you Who cried because I never knew About the boy in pictures that they showed me A rambler in my younger days I knew I made a few mistakes But I sworn I would have been there Had I known it you always said that this was something that you wanted. Son, it's time to meet your dad in Oklahoma. And hey, man. Girl, you, Say, you, man, that was you, so beautiful. Like Wait, stop the press, man. Vocals. Check it, man. That was singing, man. That was singing. Say, man, stop playing with her, man. That's art, man. I heard your yeah, vocals way more art. in this than what you did before. Uh, I had that's some why I wanted anxiety. to break. I had, to yeah, break I had some anxiety. In that freestyle, like that's why I, no, no, I no, couldn't no, no, no. start. Yeah, yeah. I like, I love that because I heard so much of your riffs, your ups oh, and man, downs. I man. mean, I heard a lot in what man. you just did. Man, and I'm in love with your voice. Check it, man. You Hold know, on, like, let me just get some more off my chest real fast. And I'm just going <laughs> just real fast. Okay. okay. Uh, what is that song? Uh, mm. Okay. See, I dug my key into the side of his pretty little souped up four wheel drive. Carved my name into his leather seats. I took a Louisville slugger to both headlights. I forgot the words. Hey, <laughs> man, check yeah, it, man. Stop it. playing yeah. with her, man. I Art says she's just showing y'all how these vocals go. You know what I'm saying? Check it out, man. She's only 24 years old, man. What's the yeah. highest range Stop you playing. can go in a song? Like, uh, what, what song do you know that pushes your vocals to the limit? 
Man. I think Beyonce songs always push me. <laughs> too let me hard. hear. It. Okay, let me hear one. Let me see how you I don't can know, go. I don't know. She don't, don't do it like that. No, Why do you right. always she mess with me? Every single time. I'm really an outro. I'm outro. Stop. No. Stop. Oh, okay. This okay. woman here. <laughs> I got a hell of a co-host, man. <laughs> Every time, not just you, everybody. Really? It's like she find a way. Now you just sung a beautiful song. No, she did. I mean, I did love two it. or three but songs. You know how but I you wanna, know what she I'll trying be, to do? I'll be like, okay, I want to see because she want to. She's curious. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I want. I want to. Baby, hear. I'm gonna let it ride. You, you know, <laughs> I want. <it's> like, <laughs> She's like, me too. Yeah, but I, okay, I just want to be comfortable with you. No, no, we good. good. We I'm good, good, I'm man. Good. Next time no, I come, you, yeah, there really you go. So, there you go. I'm really so emotional. You did a great job. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you did a great job, too. No, I, 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 loved I loved it, man. I, love, I loved it. This show, look, man, God has a way of stepping in. Yeah. And making it everything it's got in post to be. Yeah, I really believe that. You mm -hmm. know, like every time, man, it is. It, it, God just ceased to amaze me with the people that He put in that seat. Mm -hmm. I'm being real. I I I don't even know how to explain it. I mean, we have so many people that have been on this show and sung in that seat from Sir Charles Jones to L. J. Eccles to. Uh, it's always uh, a good time. All of the mm -hmm. people that's it come in here, down Terry Marshall, Cherry, just like, just mm -hmm. like you. Terry Cherry's from Ty. Well, she from uh, she live in Tyler, but she live uh, mm -hmm. she uh, from Texas County. Her voice uh, is unique too. Yeah, she mm -hmm. yeah, all of them, man. We've had so many people. Smitty Hawkins from down there where you at? Mm -hmm. um, man, I just love to see. Hey, the peace, man. Check it, Smitty, man. Um, yeah, check it, Smoothie. man. Smoothie, he bit, but Smoothie ain't did no freestyle mm -hmm. in there. Smoothie, you got to come in here and punch in. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. <laughs> but mm -hmm. no, we love you, man, and we definitely appreciate you for uh, all that, uh, all that you are bringing to the table, man, with your art. And I want you to keep blessing us with your art, art. <laughs> uh, I will. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I will. I These texts will. in the building. Stop playing. Yeah, I definitely will. Um, this time, I just feel like. Dang, y'all didn't really get to experience, like, y'all only experienced one side of me, so this is what that. What other sides of you? No, we ain't gonna do all that. We no, don't need eight sides. She's curious. Curious. Let me be what is your birthday? March 10th. Yeah, you ain't got no other side here. We'll see <laughs> I'm a Pisces. No, but how many sides, like, for you, how many sides of you you think, what, that, what are like the other exists? sides? Yeah. Like, sometimes I'm real happy, I'm real, sometimes I'm real lit, I'm turned. You know um, what that means? You bipolar. bipolar. <laughs> I'm real you know what? I got diagnosed with that. <laughs> I'm serious. I did get diagnosed with that, but I just didn't believe it. So no, like, you don't believe it. I don't believe it, it's that. just, it's just, yeah. it's actually just, you know, a lot of times people don't put names on something. Yeah. They're giving the power to the devil over their life. Don't mm -hmm. do it. I'm, don't believe that's it. it. No, no, you good people, mm -hmm. man. And if you want to smile, smile. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to uh, bust somebody, what they say in that country song she was saying. Put something in the four wheel drive. You know, I don't know. The, <laughs> oh you know, I don't know the song like that. But uh, yeah, yeah, check it, man. You Tears did a, gonna flow anyway. You did a good job, mm -hmm. man. You know what I'm saying? Did a great job, and Thanks. and I can't wait to see. So when is the when is the music dropping? You got something? You are you performing anywhere? Or do you are you just trying to figure it all out? I'm supposed to be performing um, this weekend mm -hmm. in Houston, like okay. doing like. It's not. It's a. It's live, but it'll be recorded. Like, okay. Yeah. So and then. I can't wait. Is it? Where, where can we find it at? It'll be on YouTube. Uh, straight um, up and down. Yeah. On your be, YouTube channel? No. It'll be. It'll be on Shaded's channel. Okay. Uh, I'll see what they say if I can just get my portion on yeah. mine. Okay. And then I'll be doing another live, probably uh, at the end of June. Cool. Um. So then y'all get to actually see me in my element, and just flourishing, you know, because. I'm like this. Is my first couple times, like back. I'm actually back. You know, Co mm -hmm. after COVID or before COVID and during COVID, I was kind of like in hibernation, developing. Yeah. And then now, I feel like it's really time for me to pop out. Wow. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. So where everybody can find you on social media? Uh, at under three underscores officially art. Yeah. Where? Um. So you'll be on. So oh yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so you can find me on Instagram. Uh, at three underscores officially art and twitter officially art and yeah so that's what's up man. yeah so man we thank you for coming on the show man we love your spirit Thanks. we wish you more so much success and we definitely will be following you um and we we pray that hey man no weapon formed against you should oh, prosper. In Jesus' name, amen. Yeah, 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 amen. yeah, yeah. God is so good. Gotta always say it yeah, boy, see, hey, no, hey, no weapon. No weapon. Remember I told you that, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101. And we out.